Good morning, family. God bless you. Praise the Lord. It is wonderful to be here. I love you all and am so excited to share this with you today. So let's pray. Father, today in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word. I thank you for Holy Spirit for the revelation of this word that will bring forth transformation for us as we hear by your spirit. I thank you, Father, for each person who's a part of this ministry receiving today, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. There has never been a moment in your life when you have not been loved. Now, people, adults, are known to make 35,000 decisions every day. Whether or not you choose to receive that there's never been a moment in your life when you've not been loved is a choice that God has gifted you with through Him giving you free will. You see, God gave us free will, so much so that you can choose to love Him, accept Him, or deny Him. He loves you so much that there is hell created for you if you so choose to be separate from Him. For that is the only place where he is not. So for those that choose to only want to be in no presence of God anywhere, that is hell created for them. Now through this choice that God has blessed us with, we have the right to choose him, the right to choose life. And through that right to choose, as we choose the right to live. To live unto Christ is to die into the flesh. I want to show you something in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. In verse 16, uh, actually it's 15 and it is verse 26. 15, 26 of 1 Corinthians. He must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. What is interesting is that in all of creation, when we go back to Genesis, God is the God that created. When you see God created life, it is the enemy and the plot of the enemy to destroy all creation. We can see this now through all of these idiotic ideologies that are telling us that we need to choose this over what God created, even though in the tearing down of trees to build manufacturing for fake foods, they're doing more harm to the environment than if they let the tree just grow. And so God created God created marriage between one woman, Eve, and Adam, not Eve and Steve. God created food. God created raspberries and Jolly Rancher, created Jolly Rancher, raspberry Jolly Rancher flavors. God created life through the womb of a woman. The enemy is trying to destroy the womb and the ideology of God's creation. God created weather, and the enemy has created weather simulations and weapons. God has given us the choice to choose him as he chose us from before the foundation of the earth, as is written in the book of, Jer of uh, Jeremiah. I was almost going to say Isaiah, but it is Jeremiah. And so through that, you have the choice the choice to stand and wallop every enemy that rises up against you, or the choice to sit down and be walloped. Both are a choice that you have been granted to walk in. What is fascinating about this is that death is an enemy of God. God created life, and the enemy's entire operation is to destroy life in any form, fashion, or format. And he will use anything at his disposal to conquer life through death. 
Even the magazines are now pushing, and they have been for many years, since 2013 is when I first started sharing about this, about how the, the magazines are pushing these, these, these operations to kill through Cosmo and through InStyle and these other magazines that will be targeting, targeting the youth. But if we take a greater look at the operation of this in this spiritual realm, where I'm taking you, when you see this in the spiritual realm, you will be able to see it. Death is an enemy. Death is an enemy that is creeping on throughout society. So if we are alive in Christ, and Christ came on this earth, and as we know that he did, and the cross he died on, and in three days rose from the dead, and we have received Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we proclaim, I'm a new, born again creation in Christ Jesus, then what I'm going to pose to you today is where the issue really is. And I'm going to demonstrate to you where it is, as well as how to resolve it. So we are moving in the establishment that God is the creator of life. The devil is the one that is the operative of death. If we walk in the the statement, and I'll bring forth the scripture, but if we walk in, and you hear it in many of the Christian circles, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Then why is your life not reflecting it? If the God that is in you is the one that overcame death, why some of you, or why did some of you go get in line to receive a false God. If greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, and he's the one that conquered death that is in you, then what could a false God of any form of fashion or format bring into your life except through the sin of the open door, death? Many people do not realize what happens when they don't follow the words of our brother James. Let me show you. In the book of James chapter 1. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off in 5 and just give this to you because why would we just not want to read the scripture? In verse 5, James 1, 5. If any of you lack wisdom, well, to think you don't means you do, and you need more of it, right? So we'll just set that stage. If any of you lack wisdom, well, that's me. Let him ask of God. Now, there's four earthly types of wisdom, but we're not interested in earthly realms. We're interested in the spiritual things, and wisdom only comes by God. Your, your intelligence is of no value here unless we're moving in spiritual intelligence, which is not earthly intelligence. So... Set your mind down. So we're looking at this here. Ask him of God that giveth to all men liberally. So we already know God withholds no good thing from any of his children. We're also told to ask, seek, and knock. We also know here that, that, that God is not going to withhold this. Why? Because you need wisdom to get through the day. I mean, these days are crazy. And unabradeth not, and it shall be given him. God has it in abundance to give. It gives him delight when we seek him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. So if you're going to go before him, you got to be going in faith, not in your mind. In faith, in your spirit, in your inner man. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Save me, save me, save me, God. I don't know if God can save me. Save me, save me, God. I don't know if God can save me. I need money, I need money, I need money. My bills aren't paid, my bills aren't paid, but God just saved me from the pit of hell. Hmm. Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. 
Because of the instability within the minds of man, the false God has been able to literally infiltrate the temple of God on this earth. By a willing participant that chose a lesser life. Do you see what I'm revealing here? If God is the God, which we know that God is God, that his son died on that cross so you could live and be free and you have chosen to live and be free, if you have chosen a false God, you need to repent. You have dishonored God, you have disrespected God, and you have opened yourself up to a door to partner with death. And I will provide the scripture. This message is to open your eyes that if you are going to lay claim, you are a believer and a follower of Yeshua, yet you accept the world's entrapments, then you need to choose what side you are on. It's a very sad time we are living in. And we're not even understanding what's happening because many people are saying, oh, well, the injections did this. No, actually, they did not. This goes before that because every decision that you make has an outcome. Life or death. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. There are many leaders in the body of Christ who are propagating lies. Oh, these will save you like Jesus. No, they won't. They'll kill you quicker than anything else. And that's been shown all over the world. But that's not what did it. It's the lie that the people received that has done it. So if you are ever in the, in the presence of someone, especially a leader in the body of Christ, comparing a death shot to Jesus Christ, and you have not run out that door, you need to pray for discernment and why you are still under that bondage of mind control. You are needed in the kingdom of God. And so if death is already defeated and we are here and we know what is to come in the book of Revelation, we, we understand what is to come on this earth, but we are here right now and Jesus Christ overcame death so you could live, then we have to recognize that nothing else outside of Jesus Christ will never save you. Your religion won't. Your fake, false, bought and paid for by the devil doctor never will. The medical community that's bought and paid for going back in history, you can see that. That's why they outlawed pecan seeds because they are, or apricot seeds because they're that inferior of anybody getting healed because the people are healed and they don't need them well there's no money in healthy people there's no money in in living they need to create death so that they can create new operations in which to enslave the people by this word the truth shall set you free jesus christ is the truth that died to set you free if you lay claim to this then why on earth would you ever then go and reduce yourself to something that is not a partner of life and i'm speaking in a global term not attacking anyone for any choice that has been made god created doctors we know this paul was a physician there's a difference in physicians and a doctor and we can go in and, and examine all that in the earthly realm but my point here is if you lay claim that yes he overcame death for me does your life reflect that? Isaiah 28, 15. Look at this. This was a word. <laughs> Just listen to this. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement. 2815 Isaiah. Because ye have said, so they've spoken it, we have made a covenant with death and with hell we are, are we at agreement. 
When the overflowing scourge shall pass through it, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehoods we have hid ourselves. Woe to those who have believed the lie. There is no power in death if you are a believer, a true believer, follower of Yeshua. Why? Because even when you leave from this earthly realm, you're moving into a greater one. There is a transfiguration or transformation that takes place. So when we begin to look at these things on this earth, if we are a partner or co-heirs with Christ Jesus, and we've opened ourselves up to a covenant that is not of him, then are we really co-heirs in Christ Jesus? See, it's kind of like having an open marriage. Those very rarely work. I'm married, but you know, I, I've, I just live with a free hall pass, a little dabble over here, a little over there. Then you've broken all evidence of a covenant. There's no respect or honor within the covenant. Those types of marriages are really not any type of marriage that you would want. But many people are it's cheaper to keep her. So they have contracts, addendums, till death do us part. Well, they're both on their way to an early death by the destruction of the covenant. And that's how many believers are living, forsaking the covenant that they entered into that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, and that above all, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So when somebody chooses the free will that is not standing in accordance with God's will to uphold the God of pharmacia in their lives, there's another open door. That open door is then evident. Now, the enemy likes to capitalize on all of it. The enemy wants to move in all ways. So then how can, and it is 1 John 4, 4, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So there are things that are for God's children, and then there are things that are for the devil's children. If you are God's child, why do you want to go and enter in to get what the devil's children have? You may say, well, I don't. Well, are you sure about that? So there are things that the devil's children cannot have because they have not chosen to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Therefore, they have no access to call God their father. Many will argue, well, God's the father of everyone. No, he's the creator of all, but he's only the father of those who accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior because the only way to the father is through Jesus Christ. You cannot get to God through Buddha or Allah or Harry or Joe Smith, John Smith, jo Joel, whoever Smith, there is no access for that for those people. There is none, only through Jesus Christ. So when a person then starts moving in a way that now we see the rise of the casualties on this earth, and it's noticeable, it's noticeable. Many more people have commented about there's less traffic. I said, yeah, they died. There's a lot more real estate for sale in, 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 in a lot of places. There, there are more jobs and less people to fill them. The, there is less land for cemeteries. There are more funerals with each passing day. And so when I've said these, when people have brought things up, I'm like, well, yeah, they died. I mean, that's just what's happening. But it's not what is in the natural that did it. It was the choice from the start. 
what we are seeing on this earth and i said this in march of 2020 i said this on my daily prayer call and i also told a pastor this at a at a new york when when i was speaking with him i said look pastor this is a blood sacrifice ritual this is a satanic operation this is a blood sacrifice ritual that they moved to destroy the people first here and here in their spirit to move them away from Christ, to move them in a direction that they put themselves on the altar. It's a blood sacrifice ritual. This is why the previous president was talking about all the nations under a spell. You ever heard that? Don't care about that. That's just what was spoken. And so these things here that we are seeing play out in the natural is the evidence of where the world and the people are in the inner man in the spirit. So while many people are getting caught up in ingredients, what we really need to get caught up in is this word. Because this is the word that will set you free. So if God calls death an enemy, why would we ever open up a door to partner with it and think that it won't destroy us? Why would we ever then allow ourselves to walk in fear? Well, you know, I can't be around them because of this, and they might do this, and they might do that, and they might do this. Then how the heck can you lay like, claim, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, and then walk in such fear? Now you're just double-minded man, unstable, and demonstrating that on this earth. So we're walking in wisdom to recognize that, yes, there are symptoms in the natural, but they were evident or became evident by what was in the spiritual realm. So the Bible tells us in a command over 176 times, fear not. Well, fear not is a command. And if we go into 91 of Psalms and he is our refuge, and we rest in the shadow of the Almighty and seek refuge in Him. And there is nothing that no man can do to us. For greater is He, we, we get it, right? But then why would we open up any door? Because here's what happens is this. And let me bring you to the fullness of this. Fear is disobedience. Fear is disobedience. Disobedience is sin. Sin opens the door to death. Let me take you to Genesis chapter 4. And Miss Truffles has a bully stick. So she is all over it. It is here. 4-7 of Genesis. If thou doest well... Shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and that shall rule over him. If you do not master sin, it's always crouching at the door. We know the devil is always moving, and I don't have it highlighted in this particular King James I don't have the other one here, but I'm going to show you something. Because in, in the book of Job, it's the beginning of Job. Let me show you this. Job chapter 2, 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came along them to present himself before the Lord. Huh. How do you get there? Oh, I'm just going to and fro, looking up and down the earth, looking for whom I can devour. And then 325. Mm, um, but I'll get to that. Hold on a second. And then... Because it's twice. It's twice. That was the first time, but it's again. Oh, um, go back to one. 
and one, one uh, six. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them. Oh, okay. So that's twice that Satan is presenting himself before the Lord to try to take Job out. But then look at this, 325. For the thing which I feared, which I greatly feared has come upon me and that which I was afraid of has come unto me. Oh, fear is sin and it opens up the door. In the last days, men's hearts will fail them. It's not what you see in the natural that's doing it. The things in the natural are the outcome of the choice of the door that was chosen to be open to death. Fear not. Well, you know, you just, no, 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 no. I've been there. I am not the one that can be routed on this one. You can justify your fear in any way you want to until you deal with that fear. It will be an open door that will have you bowing down and serving it. Hard truth. Fear not. Well, I fear, you know, the cancer might come back. Well, then why are you fearing? Because guess what? You just open up the door for it to come right back in, take over, reside, and spread, and have a heyday, and invite all its cousins, and there will be a party all up and down that temple. Oh, you will hear it roar. Why even open the door? What you do not open the door to cannot enter. How do we know this? It's also in the book of James. Fear, uh, submit to God... Resist the devil, and he will flee. Fear is an open doorway to death. Fear is sin. Fear is disobedience to the commands of God. And the devil is wanting to master you with fear. Fear, how am I going to feed my family? Trust God, lean not on your own understanding. Well, you just don't understand. Um, yeah, actually, let me explain this to you. Since I started ministry, I lost 95% of my income. Had over 20 grand in the bank. It's all been put into this ministry. And then some universities that I've taught for, you've heard me share this with you before, that I've been put on sabbatical, lost contracts because I am a Christian, I am a believer, and they find the evidence that supports it. And so now I am standing every day that God is my source. I don't have an earthly job. I'm standing in faith by faith that God is my source. Fear not. No, God is my source. There is no entry point. Well, what happens if you get sick? I don't get sick, so I don't need to entertain it. What happens if, if, the, if this? Why would I entertain that? This is what I entertain. Anything else that is not this is a lie. Why would I need to entertain any, any ungodly, wicked, evil imaginations that would send me over there? That means I got to repent and undo all that. Uh-uh. Don't be bringing your garbage that stinks around me. No, I'm standing firm on the word of God. And many people try to do that. Well, what about this? What about this? Shut up. Not interested. You know why? Because this is the word of God. This is the word of God that saved my life. His son saved my life. His son is the only reason that I'm standing because I surely would not be wanting to do this outside of him. I would not have the strength, let's be clear, to get up and do this every day if it were not by him. Nor would I want to because let me just say, there are some days that are harder than others, but praise God that regardless of whether it's hard or not, it is what it is. I am here by His mercy, by His grace, by the call to stand and to trust Him and know that He will provide because, yes, greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. But His word also says in Philippians 4.19 that He will provide all of my needs and glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So how could I say, thanks God for playing, but let me forsake you in this so I can go get an earthly job that still does not pay me enough. Hmm. Many of you have been in that place. So how do you do that? You choose to stand and you get yourself in agreement that regardless, God will provide for you. Well, you know, my job, well, then take your job. Take your job. But no, there's an outcome. No, that if you are standing, it's going to cost, it's going to cost you your life to stand. But then you gain it. And you will see 
the magnificent glory of God day after day after day when all you can do is stand and believe and not doubt because you will not be the tiny-minded, double-minded person who's wishy-washy. Well, is God going to show up? No, that's the wrong question. Are you going to show up? God's word has never failed. It will never fail. It is never wrong. It is never incorrect. Every word is where it needs to be. Just because your mind can't grasp that, pray for wisdom and you'll get there. Many people want to argue. That's what the, that's what the atheist found out in the Bible code. He wrote a whole book about it too when he found that out. Christ overcame death so that you could live. I'm going to encourage you today, number one, to do this. Any and all fear that would be before you needs to be demolished. Fear my marriage won't work. Fear I'm dying alone. Fear I'll never meet anybody. Fear that they're all crazy. Fear that, that uh, God doesn't have anyone for me. Fear that I won't ever get out of this. Fear that because the world is un, un the world's a mass. Fear of uncertainty. Fear of the unknown. Whatever any and all of it is, write it all down. Release it. Cut it up. Rip it up. Put it on fire. I rebuke you. I'm not receiving this. I only receive the fullness of the word of God in my life. God will provide. I thank you, Lord, that I don't know how because you don't need to know. It's only God's job to know how. God will. Thank you, Lord, because you can't figure it out anyway. Thank you, Lord, that you will provide. Thank you, Lord, you are my source. Thank you, Lord, that I am never without. And I will tell you that I know that I know that I know that I know that he will. How do I know that? Because I'm standing right here telling you. Nobody can tell you the fullness of something that they have never experienced. So most of people want to talk, but they never done anything. They can't figure out how to get out of a paper bag or tie their Velcro shoes wanting to tell you what to do. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. No, and they're walking and probably fear themselves. No, you get in the word, you stand on the word, and you thank God that he has never left you and that he never will. And for any of you that have done anything entering in to be a partner with any of the pharmacia, well, you know what? If you have fear because of what all the worldly stuff says in the Deagle Report and all these other people in the worldly way, then when the more you start listening to that, you might you start diagnosing. You know, you see a lot of people with the self-diagnosis, and by the time they end up in the doctor, the doctor's office, they need to be in the psych ward because they just put themselves in a tizzy with all this mental incapa incapacities that were nothing filled with it. No, not you. You stand. You will live. God's word says one thing. The world says another. Which God are you going to believe? I'm going to take you back as I close out to, to 1 Corinthians because I want you to really get this and let it marinate and you take it with you and you start, start seeking the Lord. This is not a name it and a claim it because many of you have been doing that and it's not working and there's a reason that it's not working. You got to know what the rhema word is for you that you lay claim and you walk in that moves over you. 1526, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Okay, so when we when we look, yes, we can, we can look at Christ. Now, I'm going to look at this. Um, look at this. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how some, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? If you are resurrected in Christ Jesus, you better get yourself up. You better thank God that you are living, breathing, that you can proclaim to his love and his mercies for all your days. You need to get up and you need to put death under your feet. And if you need to do like I did, devil lives here. And every step I took, oh, I crushed that devil every single day. That is how I am standing. Because I'm standing, not focused on on him. I'm standing focused on the things of the Lord, that God is my source, God is my provider, Jehovah Dwarfer, Jehovah Siku, Siki, Jehovah Sikudu, Jehovah Jireh, El Shaddai, El Elyon, El, all of it. I am in that 
place and you need to get yourself there regardless of what you've done in your past and regardless of what it looks like you need to move here to get here in agreement yes lord i am in this place for you yes lord you have made the way and yes lord i will reign with you on this earth so long as you allow me breath i am not giving my breath up early to some fear that has no authority to be in me in the first place hallelujah no There are false gods everywhere. And the false gods that people start idolizing are not really in the natural first. They are on the spiritual. And the only way that you will ever live and testify is by this living word of God. You don't need anything else. Now, when I say you don't need anything else, I am not your doctor, but I'm saying this in the spiritual realm that I believe in signs, miracles, and wonders. I've seen legs grow back. I've walked in these things. I know what God has done in my life. I am sharing this with you so that you can start standing and start proclaiming every single morning, every single moment of every single day, what is God doing in and to your life? As you learn how to speak, you will learn how to move and you will learn how to reign. And as you reign, you'll live as who you are in Christ. And that's when there will be that full transformation in who you are. So wherever anybody wants to put anything upon you, let them talk to the hand. No to whom you're speaking. Know to whom you listen to. Know the diagnosis, the physician, the great physician, or the puny one. What report are you receiving today? I pray that you really understand this because we are moving quickly into perilous times that we have never seen. And your reliance on any man-made is not going to work. You need to worship the Creator more than His creation. And when you move all that out, you will see who you need and what you don't need. And then you will see what you've never seen before and you will stand like you've never seen before or like you've never stood before. And it's required and it's needed and you know it. And that is my message today. So Father, today I thank you. I thank you that there is life right here, right now. Father, we rebuke the nonsense of this is going to kill you. This is reject it. You overcame death with your son. So I thank you, Father, that your son overcame death so we could live. I thank you, Father, today that we know that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so we shall speak life and the fruit thereof. That it matters not what the report of man-made ideologies are. We fear not. We reject fear. And I thank you that we can take the example from Job and not live in the self-fulfilling prophecy of fear destroying us. Oh, no, Father. We are your children. And we do decree today that we will not have an early death. We reject the spirit of death. We reject the accuser. We reject the operation trying to move through to distort our mind. This is not natural, Father. We reject all oh, this injection, that injection, these ingredients. Father, we reject the cocktails and the mocktails. And we are not the tail. We are the head. And we live above and not below. So I thank you that no weapon formed against us will come to pass, Father, including fear. I thank you today, Father. There was, we move, we are moving in life. We are advancing and we are moving together in unison with ourselves, with you, and with the brethren. 
So we thank you, Father, today that as we come before you, we come before you in strength. We come before you in belief and we come before you that we are not mastered by sin and we slam the door to the enemy and all of his cohorts and partners. We thank you today that there is no alliance that will overtake us for we are covered by the blood of the Lamb. We thank you today, Father. We submit to you. We praise you and keep praise forever on our lips as we go forward. We thank you, Father, for making the way for us as we praise you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray today that you get up, that you stand up, that you are fired up, that you are just looking up because God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You know, we pray every single day. It's over eight years so we're almost at 3,000 consecutive days of prayer. Body of believers from around the world, we are there praying. And I invite you to join us. You just dial the number. And if you don't have, are not able to access it on your phone, then you can also log in on your computer. The, the links and the information is at julieblenministries.org. I invite you to visit us there. There's a lot of stuff, and you can click on all of our missions and projects and see exactly what we're doing. I'm, I'm searching for the land and believing God's going to be providing the land for our training center. There's a lot of new resources that I'm working on, and, and there's a lot of great, exciting things that I am very excited about. And so check it all out there. And you know what? If you've not yet hit that button to partner with us, please do. The subscribe button, as they call it. Please do. There's a lot of warfare that comes in trying to get these messages out. But the devil's a liar. We will prevail. And every single click really, really helps. And if you want to reply, that would be great too. If you do have a prayer request, I would love to pray with you. And I'd love to pray for you. Just type in your prayer request. And I believe that as two more come together, that we will see an answer, that we will see God move in your life. And it's amazing what God will do. And you know, wherever you are getting fed, be a tither, be a giver. God is always providing. I'm standing here, but I also know that, that when people mm, go to God and want to be used by God to be a blessing, that he honors that. And, and so be a blessing, be a blessing to wherever you are getting fed. Every dollar is a dollar that helps. We do a lot of outreach in, in the Middle East. Our radio program is there and none of the ties or offerings ever reach stateside. All of those monies that come in those ties, those donations go right back into giving Bibles to the people there. So there's a lot of Bibles that go out in Farsi and in Urdu. And, and so they're only like $5, which is great. So we may think that it's not, that it's something, but you know what? $5 today is less than, less than a bitter coffee. Just saying every bit helps. So you do your part. You come before God. You want to be used by God. Step out in faith because it's always a faith amount. And I can tell you that as we all collectively come together to advance God's kingdom, that we're going to see even greater things and do more than what Jesus did. So check us out at julieblowministries.org. You'll see there's a lot going on. And also, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say this. Please keep me lifted up in prayer. There's a lot of battles each and every day. And I'm no different than anyone else. I'm stepping out in faith doing all this. And I believe that, that prayer provides much. And, and just thank you for keeping me prayed up and, or keeping me lifted up in prayer. And to God be the glory. That's all really I have to say. He's made the way. And so join us every day at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I look forward to the next message that he has for us all. God bless you. And as we go out, I love you all. Have a blessed day today. Bye-bye.